one of the questions that we get a lot of the time is why RVing is for us and why we have chosen to do this. So what do you think? I think that for us, we're self-employed. To running a business on the road was a challenge at first with internet and all kinds of other problems. There's always challenges on everything, but when you're on a road mobile, you're cutting cords. And we still have issues, but we're learning to roll with the punches mm -hmm. and move on. Move on. We just got to keep going. So I think we've met a lot of people. Business-wise, we've met a lot of people. We're not financially doing better in our business, but we're actually meeting more people so down the road we'll do better. And we've met a lot of, we've seen a lot of new places, gotten right. through a lot of new experiences. Yep. So the other question we get a lot of the time is how did you deal with the changes from going from a house to an RV? Well, even in this big rig we have here, it's a pretty big setup. There's bigger, but this is pretty big. It was still hard at first. Now wow. it's, now actually we like it better because it's easier to clean. It's just, we still got to clean. We got to clean right now and it's like, ah. Uh, because we, we don't even want to clean what we have now. Imagine 3,200 square foot is what we had well, before Well, in the house, house, I had to clean every, every single day. Every day she was cleaning, so that was taking time away from our business to make money. Every day it was cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And I clean in here every day, and, you know, you pick up things. But it's but quick. It's easy. It's, it's easier. Um, the only other thing that I will say is I have to dust a lot more in here because it's a smaller area. Yeah, and, it, and cars are passing. And yeah, stuff. and then the cheap filters they put in here, which we're going to try to get better ones. So. Yeah, but honestly, it was a little bit of a culture shock for me. I was like, whoa. I was yeah. like, we're going from the house to an RV. And we went from our house to our class A, which was kind of like living Even in smaller. a long hallway because we only have one slide. Yeah. That was actually harder. This is a lot easier. I got more storage and a rig and underneath. <sighs> when it, we got know. Lola, I was like, ha ha. Yeah, Lola's huge. But that's um, that's that's what we did. So, if, guys, if you're out there and you're looking and you're trying to talk the wife in to uh, moving full time or doing whatever, full-time in an RV, well, guess what? You just tell her it's easier to clean and shaboom, shabang, you're in. Don't listen to him. He thinks that, that every woman will be like me and say, okay, honey, whatever you want to do, we'll figure it out together. That, Not every woman is like that, but you do have to make concessions for your wife. But does it help a little bit? It helps. Well, the other thing is that we're finding out is if you're going to go where everybody else is going, like say... The summertime, it's so hot in Florida, so hot in, in, you know, South Carolina, North Carolina. You want to go up to the mountains like we've chosen to do? Make sure you have your reservations. Yes. Either seasonal or weekly or whatever, whenever you're going to go because there's no spots. Just like in business or life, don't follow the crowd. We don't tend to follow people, honestly. Um, we're making our choices on where we want to be. We were just right. tired of the heat. We were tired of the same, not being able to breathe outside. We wanted to be able to spend more time outside, which is why we chose the mountains as opposed to the beach. We were by the beach for the winter time. Did we choose the right beach? Probably not, but we are trying to figure out what works for us. And that's the other thing. You guys need to find out what works for you and for your family or you and your spouse or just you, you know? Whether you want to be in the beach when it's nice and stinky and hot, or if you want to be in the mountains when it's beautiful and, you know. And another outside. thing is we've been calling around parks. And believe me, believe me, parks will take advantage of you. Because they can. And why not? If you own a park, you do the same thing, right? You'd make more money. That's why you invest in a park. <laughs> we've I mean, learned a lot. Yeah, we've been calling around in the mountains here, and they're like, well, we can't get you in for a month, but we can get you in for four days at $85 a day. Or how about this one? For our anniversary, I wanted to go to this really cute place. It was right on the creek side, and it had little... They were $120 a day. Well, they wanted $384 for four days. Yeah, what they're doing is basically... No, 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 said, no, no, and no. they even told us, they came and said, Ross, I'll be straight forward with you. We don't make any money on monthlies. We can't lower the rent. We make so much money to keep these spots full weekend and five-day rentals, and why would I rent monthly? She even told me that. I and said, you know what? Thank you for telling me that because I appreciate that. What was the extra that. charge a day? Um, it was ridiculous. I mean, I it's, think it was like 3 or $4 extra a day because we are a fifth wheel, and we would be renting monthly instead of, you know, like every day. Yeah, they want, and then they want more for 50 amp and this and that. But we're gonna, oh, yeah, yeah, 50 amp. Yeah. That's what it was. We're going we're gonna to get a hybrid inverter later. And then we're going to do half DC, I mean half off grid, half on grid, so we can plug into plug into 30 amp and be just fine. That's the other thing. If you think going from your house to an RV is going to be cheaper, uh uh uh, that's just more expensive. It's, I agree. If, unless you're totally smart or boondocking in a parking lot at Walmart 
or wherever you're going, it's going to be uh, probably double the price. But for us, parking parking in a parking lot is not going to work. For yeah, us. parking We're lot's not going to work. Those kind Security of reasons and stuff. It just you We're sleep just better, like and it's too loud. I want to sleep at night, don't you? I do too. And when we went to the this Flying is... J and we boondocked for that first time. I didn't sleep the whole stinking night because I was freaking out. I thought somebody was going to come well, in the got, window. Some kids came around and revved their car at each RV on purpose. And then all the guys, rude. everybody from the RVs got out and tried to chase the car. That's how mad they were. It was rude. So that's what we had to deal with. But the main thing is, is I'll tell you what. The main thing is, is um, we sleep better in this rig in parks now. And if it's a Sometimes. nice quiet park, than we did at our house. We, I sleep better. We had a scary incident with a guy who was really wanted to follow us around and he was just scary and yeah, i some, wasn't yeah. sleeping well at all well, we do put our life online yeah well that can be pretty scary too mm -hmm. so that's why we try to keep things private from other people as much as possible but we do want to show you our life as well so okay so another question that we get all the time is if you had to do it again would you choose size matters or like a 450 or 550 is there a 550 i don't know but i'd choose a van it'd be easier Vans are easier to get around in. That's not the question. Okay. I would choose, um, I would take the semi-truck again because of the safety features. When I hit the brake, it'll stop. I mean, it's going to stop in a truck too, but I, I, I would choose a semi because you can pull a motorcycle up there and motorcycle rack. It's just so convenient. Um, you know, having that power and having enough fuel on board to go over to here from, you know, Florida to Texas in one, one, one fill up and not have to fight to get in gas stations and yeah, it's a lot more challenge. The oil change on that thing is a lot more expensive, but not that much. It's like 400 bucks. But, you know, on a, a big diesel truck, it could be 250 200 with all your filters. So it's not much of a difference, and you don't have to change it every three years. And I must agree, because I really like drive, like sitting in Size Matters. I like all the extra area mm -hmm. if we needed storage. It's so much of a safety feature like storms. If a big if tornado comes through, I'd jump in, jump in Size Matters. It's, it's taken care of. It's 17,000 pounds of very little cab. Very less, less, there's not much wind drag on it, so. There's a lot of things that we've learned doing that. Yeah, and we're, we're getting nine miles at a gallon, so nine and a half miles at a gallon is not bad for a big truck like that. Yeah, and for certain people, van living and class A is maybe the way to go, but for us, this has worked yeah. for us. Because we're running a business out of here, so it, it, otherwise we would have something way smaller than this. So the other question. And it keeps your relationship healthy because it's huge. You get in different spots, right? We, we work together. Eat together, together, sleep eat together, sleep together, sleep together. So sometimes poop together. We need separation. We don't and poop together, but it feels like we poop together. Well, you know, living in an RV, the walls are like paper. Inve so invest in a good bathroom fan, please. If you are not comfortable with yourself, if you're not comfortable with your spouse yeah. or your partner, you this will not work for you. You might as well end that marriage. End the marriage or buy a house. <laughs> it's not going to work for you. Go ahead. So the other thing is. Would we buy a Class A, or we would, would we continue with a fifth wheel? I would say, um, huh. Class A's are nice, guys. They're yeah. nice and convenient. They're low. The wind drag, if you're at a park, a big storm comes in, they're not going anywhere. you got all that weight of the axles and an engine holding you down. I mean, these are like kites, these big fifth wheels. They move in the wind, trust me. Even this big, heavy thing moves in the wind with all these jacks and everything else. It still moves around. So I don't know. I would probably still go with this, right? Because I of the would. size, the ceilings, you feel like you're in a house in here. That's that's why I would. Well, like with a Class A, you can pull your jacks up and boom, motor on yeah, down the road. It's but nice. with a Class A, you don't have the extra room like we do, yeah. and it's not set up like a little apartment on wheels. Yeah. I mean, it's more um, you're sitting in your car, in your living room, and in your dining room yeah. as to where this our, is our house, and yeah. we hook it to Size Matters, and we're gone. For us, the windshield in the front of the Class A's, we had a Class A, and the windshield kind of felt like we were in a car. I was like, the, the whole time, and I didn't, it was claustrophobic a little bit for us, but... We recommend to um, rent a Class A. Yeah, rent a Class A, see if you like it, but it's hard, when people say rent a hard, at Class A to try it, it's hard to do because the short time being in it, it's fun. It's like a it little tree, a tree, tree house, tree really house on is. wheels. But being in it for a while is a big difference. So you're right, you're right. Well, if, if you look at the biggest RVs out there, they're fifth wheels. I mean, Simon, yeah. that guy Simon and Leonardo. I mean, DiCaprio. They're all double story fifth wheels pulled by semi trucks. That's the biggest ones in a. I in would a, not want to see that. We, yeah, you can't get anywhere with that. No part. No. But we we like to sit a month at a time places because we just can't pack up every day. I have too much going on for business. We can't do it.
we honestly, I, we see there's a lot of other people on YouTube that are able to go spot to spot to spot every other day but they're or every other week. You know? For them, that works. But for us in our business, right. we need a little bit more stability yeah. and a little bit more, especially with our dogs yeah, and we have me. Our I dogs need more and we have more equipment, but we could downgrade a little bit more. But I like I like Lola and Size Matters. I like it. It's, I like what we do. Do your research, guys. Trust me. It pays off at the end. You need to do your research. You need to find out what is going to work best for you. This goes back to Class A, Class B, Class C, whatever. Full time boondocking and parking lots, whatever. whatever we have it is. friends that have class that have a Class A, and they want to go down to a small van, and I'm like, whoa, you know, yeah. a Class C, and they want to go to a van or yeah. something. I don't know. I'm like, wow. You know, for us, this is rough, but they want a full time in a van. I'm, I yeah, don't that's, know about that. You can't possibly. I mean, you could definitely full time in a van. Definitely. You One person. Could. Not a family. Not a family. You're not going to put a family in a van. I don't care who you are. That's It's going to be too, too, too tight. I, I, for us, I think that this works because we get to travel and we get to see some really cool mm -hmm. things. Um, but you need to do your research on one, the parks, two, the area, because you just don't know, especially when you're traveling. We've gone through some pretty shady areas and we're like, whoa, how did we get here? Get us out of here yeah, now. I've been, I've been driving the rig with this through some shady areas and like trying no. to learn how to shift and everything else. I'm like, and trying not to hit the lights and the trees and everything else and the wires. It's like, <laughs> holy cow, get me out of here. I haven't eaten nothing all day and I'm going touching wires in my RV and dealing with if I, if I stall this thing or if I, something happens, I'm stuck in the middle of what kind of town this is. I mean, there's... Sometimes you just don't know. And if, if, you're in, if you're in a town where people... Where, where to, if you ask for directions and you have to pay the person to get directions, run. then get out of that town. Run far, run fast. If it's five bucks for directions, get out of town, right? <laughs> run far, or or run make fast. sure your GPS is up to par. GPS. Oh, just another thing. Get a GPS and don't go cheap on a GPS. I don't care if you have to put it on a credit card. It's so worth it. It you, you hit a low bridge. Too. You hit a low. We bought two. We spent a lot of money in GPSs, but and we don't use them that much. To be honest with you. Only because we started off with our moving. phones. And maps, and that didn't work out so well for us. Here I am driving t 10 speed going down, or if you're in a class A, whatever, and you're driving, all of a sudden, your you're GPS, you're watching GPS, and all of a sudden, a phone call comes in, and you lose your maps, and then he exits like right there, and you're on 95. <laughs> and if you, you can't turn rig, most RVs are a pain to turn around, even vans. I mean, you know, you got to get back up on the highway in a big, heavy loaded van, it's still you got to waste gas, get back up on that ramp. And for us, we needed one that does uh, semi truck routes because we have such a big fifth wheel. And it's so high up, it's like semi truck height. And Lola is, I mean, um, Size Matters is so wide. Yeah. We have well, to. Well, sure. Size Matters is the same width as the RV. Yeah, but we've gone down some really hairy streets. Yeah, I mean, I can, I, can, I can squeeze. I can squeeze. I can squeeze in some spots. You can squeeze. I can squeeze in spots like, you know, like height and then width but it's the um it's the um and length is really not an issue it's the it's the curves and the curves like speed bumps and getting in gas stations would be a nightmare because i'm gonna bottom out yeah when i when we drive and we travel i have the walkie talkie and i'm in front of him and i tell him hey there's a huge dip hey big bumps hey this hey get on this side of the road it's better for you or hey but there's you, a police officer you got to get out of this but road. you know what i bottom out less with this big long fifth wheel and the semi truck pulling than I did in Harvey, this Class A. I bottomed out more in a Class A because it was so low to the back of the ground. Harvey was rough. This this is pretty high up, so it's pretty good. I mean, it's hard to bottom this out, but you can. It's long, longer. Well, Lola kind of sits pretty high in the back. So yeah, Lola sits pretty high. Just my back jacks, so I take the plates off, you know, just in case. So you learn, you learn down the road, you guys. You learn. You'll get you to do. feel the vehicle when you're driving. You know when it's going to hit. You just know. And when you first get into your RV, you think, oh, everything has to be plastic, and it has to be not fancy, and it has to be... No. Yeah, Honestly, you don't need to use plastic forks. we got a whole thing of silverware. It's just like... This is just like a house. Silverware, we have regular, you know, um, Cory, Cory, whatever, Corel dishes yep. that my mom bought us. We have our glass mugs. Of course, these are our plastic cups. I, but we, you know, we treated it as though it's our house because it is and just one quick note if you have a refrigerator if you're deciding on a refrigerator some want the double doors and stuff i recommend we have a full-size residential frigidaire gallery huge refrigerator nicer than what we had in our house and we had a nice one in our house this mm -hmm. is nicer way nicer mm -hmm. and full-size refrigerators are great because you can buy stuff in bulk and you can store stuff and you can buy a bigger amount and save money and that's huge and that it's just so efficient and it's so um 
it, it, the air moves around so good. It's just like a regular refrigerator. You also have ice makers in there. Yeah, so ice instead makers of and digital putting a controls. portable ice maker yeah, it's on all your built counter. In. But there's flaw, there's downfalls in that. That one downfall is the, the line outside below your slide at the winter in the winter can freeze. Um, and another thing is you can't awesome. run it on gas. You have to run on electric, so you have to have enough battery bank and solar and inverters to run that electric. You can't just hit the switch and run it on gas. There is no gas. That I don't worry about heat is. I like I like having the gas. Gas I love. I mean the gas stove. I always fill my tanks up and getting another thirty gallon tank. Gas you can boondock places and if you get stuck, you can boondock on gas. Right? And pantry, pantry size is very pantry important. Pantry size is important. Because a lot of times we looked in RVs and fifth wheels and they just had like one or two little cabinets. Yeah, I'm like, wait a second. Horrible. If we go to an area like we are now and we have to go down the mountain to get to, to a Walmart grocery or store wherever, or whatever, yeah. I don't want to have to keep going down every single day. I mean the blue logo store? It's pain in the behind. So exactly. I want to be able to go grocery shopping like I would in my house and fill my pantry and have enough food for a week or a week and a half, two weeks so that I don't have to keep worrying about it. Yeah. When we were in Harvey, that was so rough because we were putting cans underneath this. The, the we're tables. spending a lot of money. We were putting it in the linen closet. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking for places to put food and put water and because we didn't have our RO thingy in. And another thing is, is water, bottled water. You're going to be spend a lot of money in bottled water and you're going to spend a lot of money in laundry, doing laundry. We're spending $120 a week. Maybe more. A week? A week. Because... No, a month. $120 a month we're spending. $100 to $120 oh, a well, month. Oh, it was $30 a week. $30 a week or whatever. But the thing 40. is, is we got, we went and got a clearance washer and we didn't get a dryer because of the power issue. The dryer will be coming, don't you worry. Okay. But we got a, we got a washer and it washes our clothes for basically free and we spent $275 on a brand new washer. We got, it was a $400 washer. We got it, we, 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 we waited and waited and got on sale and now that thing has paid itself off in two months. Mm -hmm. It literally paid itself off in two months. And so I was now able to wash our clothes is free. I was able to wash his his big blanket that he sleeps with. Yeah. I was able to stick that sucker right in there, yeah. washed it no problem, and I'm pretty impressed with that washer, honestly. So if I were you, instead of waiting and you know using the washing machine and things at the laundry, yeah, because then you get the gum parks, in the dryers over there, and you get it's some smelly we're just socks pains and in underwear. The asses, okay, we're pains in the asses. We are particular. Yes. We like things a certain way, and for us, this is what works. It you may be okay with using those. You may, be, you, you may be fine with just washing in a sink and hanging them out by hand. That's, that's fine. That's fine. If you're one person, I almost recommend doing that. Are you going to wash your clothes in the sink? Yeah, I'll wash my clothes in the sink. But Oh, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, see anyways, that smile on their face? I just go buy new clothes, throw the old underwear out. You have not bought new clothes for almost, I couldn't even tell you. I even bought you that shirt. How old is this shirt? I don't know, maybe seven years old? So, guys, that's a big deal. If you guys want to go RVing full-time, go. Do it. We're not saying every, anything. We're, we're, we give you the negatives and the positives. We're trying so to tell you what we're trying we've to tell you what we've learned in the last year or so. That's it. One year anniversary, almost one year anniversary. It's coming up, and that's what you get, guys. So if you found this helpful, this video, you know what to do: like and share it because that helps us. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, guys. What are you waiting for? And I'm sure we left out a bunch of things that people have asked us, but don't worry, we will get to those yeah, in our next video. Leave us some comments below. And we will We read them. every comment that you put. If you good put a bad. comment there, good or bad, <laughs> we will read it. So, and we'll do a video like this. We, we, instead of responding to the comments, we'll put it in a video usually. This is what we're trying to do because the it's comments, too much. It, it's just a I, lot. I, I, I can't, I'm squirreled on comment listens. And it's upsetting to me when Hundreds. I see the nasty comments from other people. Yeah, some people I are just... nasty, so we don't really read the comments as much as we skim through them and read the positive ones and some of the negatives, but... You know, in YouTube, the YouTube life, if you read all the negatives, then you're just going to get wiped. There's you're not going to so want to do a video. What, you're doing videos for people to be nasty at you. So. People are nasty. But we're taking it the other way. We're thinking positive, And that's it, guys. And we appreciate everything. We do. So remember to like us and share us. And without you, we wouldn't have a YouTube channel. No way. See ya. Love ya. Like us and share us. You know you'll find us funny.